And you come here with your satanic music, lingerie, and you disrespect, violate the Quran, the Hadith. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to just be doing such a thing? May Allah curse. Oh, nah, man, come on. You know how to speak like that, man. Roll that intro. Way of Life SQ, keeping it 100. And guys, please remember the social experiment of quizzing strangers about Islam for an iPad will be dropping soon. Stay tuned. Turn on your post notifications for that because that social experiment was so dope and you don't want to miss it. MashaAllah, man. Uh, you know, I, I read the news and you probably heard of it as well. If you haven't heard right now, now you're hearing about it. Um, Rihanna dances to a hadith or, or her, her lingerie models dance to a hadith. And you, you might be like, Eski, what are you going on about? Probably this is another clickbait video of yours. And... Honestly, I, I I don't really know. It's 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 in the news. I hope you would have uh, checked it. She's receiving Rihanna. Uh, for those of you who don't know who that is, Alhamdulillah, probably for the best. Uh, you know uh, that you don't know who Rihanna is. Mashallah, you must be really busy with Quran memorization and studying and seeking knowledge that you don't know who Rihanna is. I see you. I see you out there. Mashallah, right? Um, but essentially, she had a uh, lingerie campaign for new season, new launch for her new collection of lingerie. Uh, you know <laughs> happening and the the music that she used was from some type of song uh and uh which you know obviously produced by someone and in there there was a very particular sample a little particular sampler i don't know how i feel i'll probably just roll the tape right now but the background of it had you know to a particular ear had a uh, a scholar uh narrating a hadith right uh and the interesting part is what kind of hadith that they chose but i'll get to that in a second but the scholar was narrating a hadith uh, apparently from kuwait a kuwaiti uh scholar uh from there and uh, they sampled his voice and they sort of like remixed it chopped it and all that and they put it in a, in a gana or or something i'm not I'm not really sure um, and uh, and uh, yeah, people heard it on the day of the release, and they're just like shocked, obviously, uh, because you know we uh, we're, we're allowed to listen to music apparently, and uh, you know watch such events, uh, uh, you know, and uh, you know deal with all that sort of stuff. But the moment the Quran gets in there, oh, you cross the line. Right, the moment we're, we're able to see all haram types of stuff, listen to all haram types of things, but the moments. Someone violates us by using ours out of context. No, 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 no. Then it's wrong. Some people don't see that the problem really is that people were even watching that. That's the real problem, isn't it? Not the hadith thing. Like, because look, you have to understand something. Um, we don't know Sister Rihanna's intention. I want to say Sister Rihanna just because you never know if this is how Allah Azawajal wants to introduce her. Uh, wants to introduce her to Islam, right? Um, the wrong thing would do, irrespective, uh, and we need to assume the best in the people. And what assumption actually means is making a decision about someone. That's what essentially assumption is. Making a decision about someone without having all the facts. That's what an assumption is. So in Islam, we're taught to make a positive assumption, meaning a positive, positive judgment of character, not knowing the facts, but in a positive manner, okay? So I'm not going to assume that she's some satanic, witch who's trying to appease the devil even though I know that exists even though uh, you know the forthcoming of the Dajjal uh, the Antichrist the Illumina I believe that's I'm a firm believer in these things call me a conspiracy theorist maybe but I, I do believe in this thing because it does align a lot with the Quran the Hadith and just the overall last signs of the day of judgment so I'm not going to put that negative thing on her even though I have a video that I think I should come out with uh, when I used to date this girl uh, who was a Satanist and I learned a lot from her. Uh, she told me about the blood rituals that she's partook in uh, and uh, the spirit worship that she does and the types of meditation that she performs in order to align her chakras and to actually meet with these jinn and shayateen and to have conversations with them and even take it further. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Tell me in the comment section below if you, you'd be interested in saying, stay in there, my John. Stay inside. Stay inside, please. Haya, can you stay inside, please? Can you stay inside, please? Thank you. Go inside. Close the door. Go inside, close the door, I love you. Oh, now I'm telling you multiple times, Haya? Thank you, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. So I'm not going to go down that negative assumption. Don't lock me out. <laughs> My daughter is nuts, bro. <laughs> Don't lock me out. Stop, stop, stop. So, 
<laughs> Mashallah, we all accept from us. I mean, don't. I'm not going to make a positive, a negative assumption about her. I'm going to make a positive assumption about her, and I'm going to use something that was very similar to what happened at the time of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this reminds me of the the Nessa Barrett situation. You can click that video right here where she danced or twerked to a or threw it back to a Quranic verse, and uh, she didn't know. You know, she didn't know. But a lot of us like to assume that she did know. But she did it on purpose. Mm. We like to assume that. You know, we, we like thinking negatively of people sometimes. You shouldn't think negatively of the people. And I want to give you an example of that. Uh, at the time of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Masjid Nabawi. Think about this. Masjid Nabawi. If you've ever been to uh, Medina, you know what I'm talking about. Masjid Nabawi is awesome, bro. Like... Like the vibe that you get in Nabawi is not the same as you get at the Kaaba. And, and and anyone who knows, they know what I'm talking about. You're probably nodding your head and agreeing, but like, yo, SQ, yes. I never comment SQ, but today I'm commenting because I love what you just said. Absolutely, okay. The air, it feels good. The the it just it's just coolness in the evening. It just blows over you. It's wonderful. Masjid Nabawi. That masjid. And not just that masjid, but in the time of the Messenger Sallallahu not his beautiful, you know, uh, burial site, his Rosa as they call it. Not that. Him actually being there. Not the beautiful, you know, sites of the companions, radiallahu anhum, where they're buried and Bucky and all that. No, no, no. Actually there. Like, make it come to life. They were physically there. And a Bedouin man comes into the masjid, the house of Allah. And not just any house of Allah. We're not talking about, you know, Sultan Jamia on the block. You know what I mean? We're not talking about that. We're talking about Masjid Nabawi. Okay. Comes into that masjid. One of the most sacred places for Muslims. One of the top three sacred places. And just <laughs> whips it out and urinates. Think about that. He whipped it out and just pissed and peed in the house of Allah. Look, that's a derogatory thing to do, even if you're not in the house of Allah. To do it in the street corner, to do it underneath a tree, to do it anywhere. It's a very derogatory, very negative and very nasty thing to do. And everyone would agree to that, right? To do that in a sacred place seems blasphemous, sacrilegious, so on and so forth. You name it. And that's exactly how the companions took it. They took it like how we wanted to took it. Like, yo, defensive. Have ghira over our religion. Defensive. Like, yo, who you think you are? What is this, bro? What you doing? They judge from what was apparent, apparently. Right? But what did the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want you guys to say it with me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man, when you say that Your tongue should be having a massage It should feel so good when you say that Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Oh, subhanAllah I feel like the video could just If I could just make this video The rest is just me saying Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I would be happy You know what I mean? I should just say that, like, do one of those Mr. Beast videos. I said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a hundred thousand times. <laughs> That'd be a funny one, right? That'd be a very Mr. Beast esque video. I digress. The Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, stops his companions and he tells them, Let him finish. Oh, God. Let him finish. The messenger, the best of human beings to ever walk this planet, was so considerate of the pain that a man would feel from holding in his bladder, his urethra, possibly a UTI. He said, out of the wisdom, he said, let him finish. The companions wanted to murder the man, and the messenger saying, let him finish. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, let him finish. After that, after that, once he got out of that like state of a feeling of pain, once he was out of that feeling, he felt relieved. He pulls him to the side and explains to him that this is the house of Allah. This is a sacred place. You don't do things like that over here. You don't do things like that over here. And he ordered the companions to get some water, fetch some water and clean it off. So I want to ask ourselves right now, when Sister Rihanna is doing something like this, right? Are we, are we demonstrating patience and wisdom and 
and assuming the best in her and saying that, hey, she didn't know. But Sister Rihanna, now that it's over, let me explain to you what it is. You see, Sister Rihanna, what you just did right now was a hadith. A hadith is so sacred in Islam and it's the second sacred text within Muslims. You see? We not only have the verbatim word of God that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who was also a messenger just like Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jonah, Jacob, just like every single one of them. It was revealed by the archangel Gabriel to him. And when it was revealed, he would recite it exactly how it was revealed. And it was documented by the people. And then on top of that, the actions, the character, the speech of the messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was documented by hundreds of thousands of people. People in his gathering, thousands of people. And when he spoke, people listened and they wrote and they memorized. And that's what the book is right now. So I understand it sounds melodious. It sounds melodious. It sounds beautiful. It sounds so rhythmic. I get it. It sounds so rhythmic because it's the words of God. It sounds so rhythmic. The Quran sounds so rhythmic because it's the words of God. The word sounds so special and fruitful because it's the word of the messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. That's why it sounded good. So it's not your fault you didn't know. But it sounded so lovely because, because it was special. It came from the best of creations. It had to deal with the best of creators, the only creator, Allah. If you spoke to Rihanna in this way, they might be like, yo, bro, that's deep. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I went to do, any type of time I do a Quran social experiment, check them out. A person who doesn't give da'wah doesn't understand that people don't know. People don't know. They think that kafir. Puh. Why? Because they don't give da'wah. If you gave da'wah, you have patience. You understand that people just don't know. Wait until that uh, iPad. Give it, and by the way, 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 stay tuned for the new social experiment, the best social experiment that probably anyone's ever seen or put out over here. Quizzing strangers about Islam for an iPad coming out soon. Stay tuned for that, all right? I'm going to slip that right in the intro because people need to see that, bro. It's going to be so lit. You're going to see, man. People don't know. It's our job. Whose job to give da'wah? Who are you going to call? Oh, whose job is it? Our job. It's not the media. The media is doing this thing. The media. No, it's our job. You're tired of what the media is saying? Stop talking. Get off your phone. Stop typing. And go change what the perception of the people is. Go give some street da'wah. I'm making a da'wah video, inshallah. A da'wah 101 video. Da'wah 101. How to give da'wah. And not like... Like, like what to say, but the art of giving da'wah. I'm going to be making a video. Stay tuned for that series. But hear me out, man. Hear me out. You, if you give da'wah, you know that people have, like when I do the things for, for listening to the Quran for the first time, people are like, is that music? Is that Arabic music? If I'm just like, oh, how dare you? Blaspheme. Nah, but they don't know any better. They don't know any better. Isn't it our job to explain it to them? You know, so instead of assuming negatively of Sister Rihanna and the team, and look, there could have been some mal, I, I don't know, I'm not going to discredit that, but I would rather choose to make a more positive meaning of this. You know what I mean? Choose that mainstream media is talking about Islam at least. You know, at least that that it's it's there. Choose to make it and then correct the sister as well too. And after you're done getting upset, which is a natural thing too. I don't want you to think that you're wrong or evil or have weak or low iman because you got accept. No. No, you lack sabr. We all did. Musa alayhi salam lacked sabr with, with the gentleman who he met in, uh, in Surah Kaf. He lacked sabr, didn't he? If, if some of the best of people to walk this earth could lack sabr, so can we. But now that you're done getting upset, now that you're done, you know, all with all that, now it's time for you to get the water pail and wash it off the, off the walls. You understand? Now that you're done getting upset, now it's time for you to wash it all off. You copy? Now it's time for you to clean up the area and reflect over what's just happened right now and give da'wah to Rihanna. If imagine, instead of every single one of us got upset at it, we all tagged Rihanna on this video. We all tagged Rihanna with our own special message to her, welcoming her to Islam, educating her to Islam. But no, we would rather say, how dare you? 
And we become weak and apologists about it. I'm not saying not to have ghira or defend your religion. I'm just saying also assume the best in people and know that people can change. Uh, people, situations, circumstances, and all that sort of stuff, uh, guys, can change. I appreciate you and respect you guys so much. Thank you so much um, for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. Videos like this tend to do better. So if you made it all the way to the end and you're not subscribed, uh, I encourage you to still reserve your judgment. Watch a few more videos before you decide to uh, subscribe. Uh, uh, make an informed decision, inshallah, by watching all my content because it's all really, really good and dope. I say that out of confidence, not out of arrogance. Love you all for the sake of Allah. Uh, and uh, until tomorrow, I release daily videos. So until tomorrow, I'm out.